I had an interesting interaction with somebody who I spoke to about Kaksumuti and um, they, no, this has happened a few times and they would then, in, like more, I would say slip up, they would then randomly say, well, it was a great accomplishment to understand Krishnamurti. And then, first of all, <laughs> you straight away realize that they have an egoic perspective. So they think that you make yourself better by understanding Krishnamurti, which is not the case because the making better, the achieving, accomplishing, the gaining, that is completely the opposite to what Krishnamurti is talking about. It's actually a waving a flag to your life. It's a surrendering. It's a giving up. It's accepting all your flaws, all the things that happened to you in the past and looking at them and really dealing with them. And from that total acceptance, from the total um, acceptance that the ego that you've been living with the ego that's been your best friend the ego that has been there for all of it that has only been an idea like your imaginary friend and it's like a toxic relationship so while you're with the ego you think it's good for you you think you need the ego you think the ego is going to make you better but it's not that it's the opposite to that it's saying like, okay, I know absolutely nothing. I no longer have any expectations from life. I give up everything that I hoped and dreamed for. Like for me, one of the main or the hardest thing to um, give up was my lifelong dream of having kids. So I'm not saying that I'm not going to have kids. I'm probably not, but like maybe not whatever <laughs> it doesn't matter because the dream of having kids is dead and that's a good thing <laughs> and to understand that you need to realize that your ego is responsible for your hopes and dreams as well as the negative things the anxiety the inferior feelings the overcompensation all of that like the depression the, like all of that is also attached to the ego. So you don't know, but it's like your ego is feeding you um, sweets, but at the same time hitting you. But you don't notice that it's the ego hitting you. You don't notice that it's your ego that's keeping you inside, locked up, feeling inadequate. It, you don't realize that. So it's only until it's gone that you realize it's a giving up. It's not accomplishing anything. <laughs> it's a giving up. Um, like the the that sentence was almost offending me offended me because it's the opposite so it's like no no it's not an accomplishment it's giving up your life giving up the fact that you may become somebody or be someone or do something meaningful <laughs> like you give up all of that to be nothing and before I was a victim I was a victim of abuse of sexual assault of you know, all these kind of things that I was dragging on and th that was a part of who I thought I was. And then I gave all my dreams up, my hopes up, and then my victimhood also died. So all of those ideas, they're dead. So I didn't accomplish <laughs> understanding Krishnamurti. I understood what he was trying to say to me, that all these ideas in my life, they are the cause for all the drama, all the, I was overthinking all the time, I even googled, like, how do I stop overthinking, and, like, just like that, it was over, I stopped thinking, and I just lived in the present life, mm, obviously nothing grandiose, there's no flashing lights or anything like that, <laughs> you just go on with life, and then it's humble, simple things that bring you so much joy, like you don't need to, you don't need much, you know, a butterfly flying by or like that, like that's what life is actually like. That's what it's like as a kid and you can have that back and all you need to do is accept yourself for who you are, for what has happened to you, accept everything in your past, everything that you're still fighting against and stop fighting, stop struggling against the stream and then 
as soon as you do that, you become whole, and then you find out what true self acceptance, uh, true self acceptance, true love, true independence, and becoming whole. So you become one, <laughs> and that's what it's about. So for me, it was more like, oh, you mean the day that I started living again, because it wasn't the achieving. It was like before I was stopping myself from living i was hindering myself from living i was keeping my mind in a cage i was i was it was getting tighter and more claustrophobic and you know the more the like everything just piled on and the more that happened the more i started thinking and i didn't realize that you can just go like oh this happened i think about it for a second like go it through oh is this possible and then I accept what is, so I don't believe anybody, I don't believe in my ideas, I don't believe in things that I thought before, or what what, what happened before, whatever, I don't have any expectations, nothing. And then life is so much easier. You don't even know how much energy you drain from yourself when you're just overthinking until you stop. And then that's what Krishnamurti always talks about with the energy. Then suddenly you have energy for everything. You can, like, I skateboarded like <laughs> six hours a day. I was working as well. And then I went to parties afterwards because I just had this boundless energy. Nothing was hindering me from being open to the opportunities presented to me, which completely changed my life like foundationally from that day on. So it's like uh, when I think of that day, I'm thinking like I, I just go like in my head, I can just hear a choir like singing, you know, like it's like, oh, that day is when I got set free and I was set free from myself, by myself. I was imprisoned, I, I was imprisoned in my own mind. So I was doing this to myself the whole time. And then I just stopped, and that was it. And that's why, like, it's not an accomplishment. I was tr not trying to accomplish Krishnamurti. I didn't even know there was an end. Like, I was just listening to him because what he was saying was making a lot of sense to me. And, and then all of a sudden I just completely understood the big picture. And that's what it's about. You can then see the bigger picture in life. So... It's like before with the egoic world view, you can only see it from your perspective. Sometimes you can empathize with other people, but it's a very limited world view. And <laughs> as soon as you don't have that anymore, like if you you start engaging with anybody in anything that you want to, like animals, children, <laughs> people, if you want to, or you go meditate on like it's a completely different life it's so free and easy and um yeah many people talk about present life now so you can even so krishnamurti always talks about the end goal and that is ego death i like i in no way do i want to question that that is like he is completely right um like there's no question <laughs> whether it works or not because it worked for me in my life. I'm just trying to talk about other stuff, more practical stuff, um, so that you can understand um, the same or maybe it just gives you a little bit. It's like secondary literature. <laughs> and Yeah, in a bad way. <laughs> um, mm. The mind state of achieving and accomplishing is the mind state of our current society. That's why Krishnamurti always says we're trying to adapt to a sick society. So it's very ego-driven. It's very, um, you have to buy a house, get kids, have a good career. So that's a very egoic, very sick society. So that's why people think that you need to accomplish Krishnamurti. But it's the opposite. It's like waving the flag, giving up your own idea of yourself and accepting yourself for who you actually are. Not who you think you are, who you actually are. So it's not an accomplishment. It's not an... Like, 
yes, my life is way better now, but it used to be like that as a child before the trauma. So it's just getting your childhood joy back and energy and, you know, carefree nature. It's possible when you're grown up. It's a lot more fun when you're grown up. <laughs> so, and like, obviously, kid, like, I don't, whatever your age is, it doesn't matter. I'm not speaking to people of any specific age. Like, it, this goes out to all human beings. Everybody that's empathic can understand this. And it makes sense, and you can start in small steps. And, and some, when you're doing something that's meditative, try not to think. Try just focusing on what you're doing and see how you feel afterwards. And um, I'm not trying to doubt Krishnamurti. I'm just trying to give you, like, little bite-sized, like, steps towards... Um, fully accepting yourself for who you actually are. And that is the end goal. That's it. Like, nobody can do that for you. Nobody can give it to you. I can't, I don't know, I'm going to try a million different ways of saying it, but I don't know if it, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm just going to keep trying different angles and we'll see what happens from there. Um, thank you very much for listening and talk to you soon. One love.